one of the reasons it was difficult to solve the slavery issue was that it was built into the economic system. And for the same reason, fossil fuels are now built into our system. And there's the resistance of the fossil fuel industry to finding a different path. There are alternative paths, clean energy paths, that could be, we could take, but as long as the fossil fuel industry controls the governments, it's very difficult to move down those paths. You are advocating that our society move away from its dependency on fossil fuels as rapidly as possible. The primary mechanism by which you see this could, could be achieved is the carbon fee and dividend proposal. Would you please explain this concept and how it would work? Yeah. Economically, the most efficient uh, energy system would be one in which the different energies pay their true cost to society. We should not be subsidizing any energy form. Instead, we should make them pay their true cost. And in the case of fossil fuels, that means the costs of human health damage from the air and water pollution from fossil fuels, but also the impact of climate change on, especially on future generations, although the impacts are already beginning now. But if we would add a, a fee to fossil fuels, collecting it from fossil fuel companies at the source, at the domestic mine or the port of entry, and distribute that money to the public, 100%, an equal amount to every legal resident of the country, uh, half a share for children, up to two per family. That would provide uh, incentive for people to try to minimize their carbon footprint because if they have less than average fossil fuel use, they will get more in their monthly dividend than they would pay in the increased prices due to the rising fee on fossil fuels. In fact, 60% of the people with the present distribution of energy use would get more in the monthly dividend than they pay in increased prices. And this would provide the incentive for entrepreneurs and business people to develop clean energies. And those people who pay attention to that will begin to make decisions that minimize their carbon footprint because they would like to stay on the positive side. That's economically the most efficient way to deal with the problem, and in fact, it would be, it stimulate the economy. It's exactly what we need now uh, to put more money in the pockets of most people, including the middle-income and low-income people. And speaking as a scientist in an ideal world, unconstrained by the pressures of political and economic acceptability, what goals or conditions would you now set for the stabilization of global climate and the avoidance of dangerous climate change? Well, if we want to stabilize climate, avoid passing the tipping points of ice sheet disintegration and species extermination, we need to keep global temperature from rising uh, really above the present level. It's all, we've already increased the temperature eight-tenths of a degree Celsius, which is about one and a half degrees Fahrenheit. It's still not quite as warm as it was in some prior interglacial periods, which were reasonably uh, similar climates. Sea level was about five meters higher during the last interglacial. Uh, so we don't want to get as warm as or warmer than that. That means that we're going to need to have carbon dioxide on the long run no more than about 350 parts per million. So that means we're going to need to reduce fossil fuel emissions by about 5 or 6 percent per year if we begin within the next year or two. If we wait 10 years to begin to reduce the emissions, then we'll have to reduce them 15 percent a year to achieve climate stabilization this century. And that is impractical. That's why it's really important that we begin to have policies that cause a reduction in emissions. And the only way that will happen is if we put an honest price on fossil fuel emissions and 
gives the money that's collected from the fossil fuel companies to the public. That's pretty much it. The end, building on the, um, the, the suing, the, the case you brought against the US government, um, do you think there's a, a wider role in terms of legislat international legislation to, to play in stopping the widespread exploitation of fossil fuels and destruction of the environment? Yeah, I, th I think that the solution to uh, the climate problem probably does require legal action because the governments are so much under the thumb of the fossil fuel industry that they're not going to willingly make the changes that are needed. But those people who recognize what we are doing to the future of young people are beginning to take legal actions, not only in the United States, but in some other countries. And I think it is important that it be in a number of countries because once uh, we begin to get action in one major economic block, it, it can become worldwide. If we would have a carbon price in the United States or say in all of Europe or China and India, the countries that do understand that they need to make the fossil fuels pay their costs, they begin to put a price on carbon. They can have a border duty on products from other countries that do not have a carbon tax. And that would be a big incentive for these other countries to have their own carbon fee so that they can collect the money rather than have it collected at the borders by the other country. Okay. Very good.